All right, you're able to see my PowerPoint slide, right? Yes. OK, so now yesterday we have gone through one example on the Pi theorem. So just recap what we have learned. There are six steps there. So step one, you look at the question and then you count how many parameters you have. So when you count the first number you count, we name it as n. Huh? n will be the number of parameter you have. Then after that, you choose the fundamental dimension. So very straightforward. Normally we'll choose m, l, and t. It is the mass, length, and time. So normally it's these three. Lah, right? Some, some people, they like to use force in a step number two. But uh, I will highly recommend not to use force uh, when it comes to step number two. Right? Use mass, length, and time for in step number two. Then step number three, you look at the, uh, the dimension that you have. It mean, means that uh, step number one, and then you look for what are the part primary dimension means that what are the repeated uh, dimension. And then step number four, you calculate the R parameter. Step number right. Then step number five, you calculate the n minus m, n minus m. The that step number five, so you can know how many pi that you that you will get. So let's say you n minus m, you get two means you have two pi answer, pi one and pi two. Then number six, you just check whether they are dimensionless, meaning you convert the pi into dimension, then you simplify the equation. Make sure you get pi equal one. It means uh, you you get the uh, after you summarize or simplify the dimension, you will get equal one. Uh, that is what we want. All right. Then after that, we write back the function. All right. After that, we write back the function. Uh, then we from there we can plot our graph. So pi one will give you one plot, pi two will give you one plot, and so on. So yesterday we see this uh, drag function. So today we look at another function. Okay, today we look at one tutorial question on this one. So we look at a capillary effect uh, in this case. So you are having a small tube dip into the liquid here, and we have a surface tension. So this one I think in the one of the chapter uh, of this uh, module. So we have a surface tension that caused the meniscus to form in the tube. And also uh, on the surface here, which is elevated or depressed depending on the contact angle. So experiment indicated that the magnitude, uh, that the magnitude of this uh, capillary effect, delta H, is a function of something. So. You, you know you should know what how to write huh? so it already give you uh, one simple equation here so it give you the magnitude of the capillary effect delta h is in a function of diameter specific height surface tension so you have a d uh, gamma and uh, sigma here right determine the number of dependent pi parameter that can be formed and obtain one set so given all this uh, you have the parameter here. So by looking at this statement, the first step, you just write the equation, the y equal to fx means the, the what is the, uh, the one on the left and then the one on the right. So the first, first equation you write, you read the, the statement and then you write. For example, this question, you are given the, the experiment uh, major objective. So it's to find the delta h. So delta h on the left, and then function small f and bracket d gamma and sigma so it means that inside the bracket it, it, it will define the diameter specific weight and uh, surface tension so this is the first step write the equation is your first step all right so the rest is just to to, to follow the the remaining step that uh, we went through so from the equation that you have Delta H equal to F D gamma sigma. So first step, you look at how many parameter you have here. 
So, uh, Amir, how many parameter you have here? How, how many, yeah, how many parameters you, you Four. can? Four, yeah? So, delta yeah. H, D, gamma, and sigma. So, we have four. So, the number of N equal to four. So, first equation, very simple equation, N equal to four. After that, you choose the fundamental dimension. In this case, direct forward, mass length, uh, mass length and T. You can use either one, but I recommend use the first, first set, uh, mass length and T. The third step, you convert the parameter that you see in the step one into uh, dimension. So in this case, so in this case, uh, I think this example, I, I have two, I show you two, two, two pathway. Uh, what is the difference first? Huh? So on the left, we, well, what if we choose mass, uh, length and time? And on the right hand side, what happens if we choose force, length and time? So what are the differences? At the end, they still reach the same answer, but the step might be a little bit different. So on the left hand side, you put delta H, D, gamma, and sigma. So diameter, uh, this one is what? Uh, gamma is the specific weight and surface tension. So for, on sub three, you write the unit or the fundamental uh, parameter. So delta H is length, L. Diameter is L. So specific weight, you can look at the appendix and then from there you convert into the fundamental uh, dimension you have. So it's mass divided by length square T square, time square. And uh, stress here is uh, force divided by area or is a, a, it's a stress, yeah? Stress force. Let me check whether it's force or load. Surface tension. So surface tension is uh, is like a pressure, right? But in this case, it's right as a uh, mass divided by t square. So if you look at the the set that you have, l l m divided by l square t square m divided by t square. So basically, you have three repeating steps. So this one is one set, this one is one set, this one is one set. Yeah. What happens if you if you choose the force, uh, length and time? So same. So you can see the differences from the dimension you choose. Delta H is still use length. Diameter is still use length. Specific weight it changed to force already. Force divided by L cube, uh, and the surface tension it become force divided by length. All right. So I got to divide by length. Okay. So the repeating, or if you use force, the repeating will be two. So you will see the um, the L and the F divided by L is the only the repeating parameter here. Okay. So what 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 is the further step? We we will proceed with the left hand side set first. Then I will show you the right hand side. So we proceed to the left hand side uh, procedure. Okay. So um, the next steps we will find whether m is equal to r. Okay, so we will use matrix to to find it. So the matrix steps will be, we take the four delta H D gamma and sigma, and then we put in the the numbers of uh, m l t in the matrix. So for example, how you get zero zero one one? So if you look at the uh, the function you have over here, you just convert the information that you have on this screen. You convert into this one. Mass, you have you have one. All right. So for example, uh, MLT delta H. The label is L. The 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 basic uh, fundamental dimension is L delta H L. D is L. So when you write matrix. Below H, M is zero, L is one, T is one. So below T, you write zero, one, zero. So for yes. specific, yes. These numbers are like the exponents, right? For, for the no, no, this, this one is, uh, you count how many uh, fundamental dimension you have. So for example, yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. you can say as a ABCD, 
So you can yeah, see yeah. as a, yeah. But this one is is, is using the matrix method. Lah. It's yeah. using a matrix method. Yeah. It, it's actually the same. It's, it's just in, in in the different approach. Lah. Right? So you just write yeah. all these all these things together. Same with the other side, false equal to this one. Yeah. Then you calculate using matrix method. So if you use the 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 one on the left hand side. So I'll show you the one on the left hand side first. So the first one you get uh, for the determinant of this uh, three times three matrix, you get zero. Um, you can use online matrix calculator if you want. So what is the online matrix calculator? I will I'll show you. So if you Google um, matrix calculator, So you go to first one. So this is a matrix calculator that you can use. For example, you want to, these are all the button you can press. So for example, I key in 1111 or 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, 1, 1, 1, 1. And then I, you can use all these things. So you can find determinants, you can find inverse, you can find transpose, you can find uh, rank and so on. So uh, it's quite straightforward, uh, like a handphone. So if you play around with it, you're able to find it quite straightforward. So the answer, if you press the answer, you want to find the transpose, you press transpose, the answer will come up in the below here. And then the answer you can in, you can import back to the uh, space here. We have two space for you to put in. So you can have uh, two matrix, matrix A and matrix B, and you can do the multiplication, for example, you can, let's say I key in uh, another matrix, three times three matrix. So if I want to add matrix A and matrix B, I just press the plus button. So it will add the mat two matrix for me. I'll get my answer here. So let's say I want to import my answer back to a matrix A. So I just go to the back here. I press insert in A. So my answer will go into here. So let's say I want to take matrix A times matrix B. So I just press A times B. It will calculate for me. Okay. So let's say I want to find the inverse of uh, this matrix A. What I do, I just press find inverse of my this inverse. Cool. So you will say determine is zero. Matrix have, is not inevitable. So it will tell you that this is uh, inevitable matrix for uh, for examples then you there's information about what is this these things right it's quite straightforward so the, if you have a constant value you can multiply you can also multiply so you just press multiply by two you will come up below here so you can save all your calculation steps inside the website here and so on um, and what happened if you have a big uh, matrix so you can you can press the plus button here. Plus and minus means you increase the size. So you press one time, you increase to four times four. You press one more time, five times five. You press one time, six times six. So what happens if you do not key in all this value, all this empty space, you automatic key in as zero for you. Right, so this is uh, one of the two that you can use. Huh? Okay, all right. So we back to our lecture. So if you use calculator, you get zero. And if you want to find determinants of this one, this set, you'll get four. So it's not equal to zero. So we will use uh, m equal to two. Yeah? So your, your m is not equal to your r in this case. Or if you do the ABCD uh, step in the previous example, you can still get the same, same thing. So you guess three. So the repeating parameter, we select two. So in this, among these four, delta H, D, gamma, and sigma, we choose the repeating two parameter. We choose this one and this one, right? And then step five, we just calculate how many pi number you have. 
So n minus m, 4 minus 2, you get 2. So you have 2 pi answer. Okay, pi 1, you take the repeating parameter d and gamma, and you put in delta h, put in the a and b, then you calculate what is a and b, equal to 0. All right? So pi 2 also same, pi 2 equal to d, c, gamma, d, sigma, Okay, then you calculate what is CD, like the previous example. Okay, so I show you the steps. So pi one equal to D A B uh, delta H, and then you write in the uh, fundamental dimension. You convert D into L, gamma into M divided by L square T square delta H as L, and then you equal equal to M power zero L power zero T L over zero. Then you go and go ahead and find A and B. Okay, so from here you're able to find your B zero, A minus one, and be careful when you write the answer uh, later. So your L, your pi one equal to D power A gamma power B delta H. So remember something delta uh, something exponential zero or power zero you get one. So you don't need to write the answer. So your pi one equal to delta H divided by T. So your gamma is not inside the answer. So just be careful on uh, when you simplify your answer later on. So you, you repeat the same process for pi two, which is the D power C, gamma power D and sigma. You do the same, you find what is C and D. Okay, L and, and repeat the same. You can find what is D, what is C and so on. You put back into the answer, uh, into the, yeah, your answer. Pi 2 equal to D minus 2 gamma minus 1 sigma. You rewrite the it in the correct form. Pi 2 equal to sigma divided by D 2 gamma. So you have two, two pi answer there. After that, you just uh, write them in the unit. So you convert pi 1 in the bracket. You write uh, bracket pi 1 bracket delta HD, convert them into the their unit. So you have L divided by L. So delta H is L, D is L. So L, L divided by L, you get one. So this is what you want. Then you analyze for pi two. So pi two equal to sigma divided by D square gamma. You write their, their form. Yeah, you write their form. Uh, in this case, we use force. Huh? We use force to to to, to find. So um, you just simplify the fundamental uh, uh, units here. You will get equal one. So this is what we want. Then we predict the the functional uh, relationship. So pi one equal to small function uh, small f bracket uh, not bracket column and uh, pi 2. So you write this in this form. Pi 1 equal to function pi 2. And then you just rewrite back what is pi 1. Pi 1 equal to delta H divided by D equal to function sigma divided by D to gamma. Meaning this is your y-axis, this is your x-axis if you want to plot graph. And in, in the experiment, you need, to, you need to determine the relationship between your pi 1 and pi 2. Okay, you is that alright, Amir? Is that, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so it's just we're actually repeating what we learned yesterday. Let me check. Is this cool here? Cool signal here, alright? Okay, so what happened if we use the force just now on the right hand side? So we continue. So if you analyze the the matrix, you will get two. So m equal to two. R equal to m, and so on. Then you repeat the take the repeating parameter. So in this case, d and gamma. So you have uh, four minus two. You have uh, two pi. N minus two, two. So you have two pi. So you rewrite pi one equal to d gamma delta h. In this case, just to differentiate the the method, uh, I will just use the different sub here. So e f pi two equal to same d gamma and sigma. And then you analyze what is E, F, G, H, like the previous steps. So you have this one equal to this one equal 0, 0, 0. 
find what is E and F. So if F is equal to zero, E equal to one, you rewrite back this equation, pi one equal to D, power E gamma F delta H, you get your pi one. Pi one equal to delta H divided by D. You repeat the same for uh, pi two. You find what is G and H. So after you are done finding your GH, you, you rewrite back what is pi two. So pi two equal to sigma D two uh, gamma. After that, you check number six, you check, you convert them into a bracket. You put a bracket, write them in a the unit, then see if you're able to simplify it equal to one. So in this case, L equal L, you simplify equal one, pi two, write all the dimension, you simplify, you'll get equal one. So this is what we want. Then after that, you write into the into the function, pi one equal to small f, uh, then pi two. Okay, pi one equal to function, pi two. So delta H divided by D equal to F, sigma divided by D two gamma. So actually you arrive at the same answer as the previous one. Okay, clear So this one? Yes. Um, all right, good. So um, the third things that uh, we, we need to look at for today lecture is that the significance of dimensionless group uh, for fluid mechanics. So we have a few. So I think uh, this one is, is in the table. So this one, you just read through my slides. So uh, for today's lecture, we will look at, uh, as, as you can see on the screen here, we look at five individual forces, which is quite popular when we study fluid mechanics. The first one is viscous force. Second one is the pressure force. Third one is the gravity. Fourth one is surface tension. Fifth one is compressibility force. And then what is all these uh, parameter, uh, this table is just show you that what is viscous force about, all right? When we convert them uh, or, or what happened when we write them in, in, in terms of uh, their equation, okay? Now, for example, uh, and then on the right-hand side, right-hand portion here, it means that we change them into dimension, dimensionless uh, dimension. So uh, on the left-hand side is the one with unit viscous force. On the right hand side, we divide them with the something. In this case, we divide them with the initial initial force. Then it become a dimensionless uh, dimension. It become a ratio number. Okay, yeah. So this one, this one, you just uh, take it as an information, and then if you need to use it, then you just come back to this table. So this one is also quite popular for fluid mechanics. Just just keep, be careful. Uh, uh, just tape pay attention that you have seen this table before as you might use this, this table uh, in your coming uh, exam. Okay, so uh, what is important about this uh, PowerPoint slide is that you should know that you have five important, uh, uh, five important parameter for fluid mechanics, viscous, pressure, gravity, surface, and compressibility, okay? And then what is important is the right hand side. What happened if you need to use them? Uh, you know where to find it. So I give you a few examples. The first set, huh? the first set is about viscous force. So we try to link viscous force in terms of uh, Reynolds number. So you know that Reynolds number equal to rho VD divided by mu. This is the equation. And then there are two form of uh, Reynolds equation. One is in the dynamic, uh, viscosity, one is in a kinematic viscosity, okay? Um, then when we change them into dimensionless, uh, this one, uh, the, another form of Reynolds number, we put them in, into the characteristic length, we will change the D in term of L. Okay, how we apply the table that I showed you just now? How we apply, yeah? So, if you look at Reynolds number and then you compare to the right hand side, uh, right hand side uh, equation that you have. So actually you, you can see that it's actually it's a flip flip form of the table. Reynolds number equal to rho VL divided by mu, but in the table you are seeing mu divided by rho VL. 
So actually it's a flip form of what you have. So from here, it just proved that Reynolds number actually is a dimensionless, uh, a di uh, dimensionless parameter. Okay. The second one on pressure. So let's say uh, something that we use for uh, in experiment. Uh, we call it Euler number. So Euler number is a ratio between pressure and uh, dy dynamic pressure. Uh, it, it's just a new new experiment uh, constant value. Huh? We call it uh, Euler number. So we, we haven't seen this one before uh, or the name Euler is never mentioned before. This is the first time introduced to you guys. So Euler number is a ratio between delta P and the dynamic pressure, half rho V squared. So if you look, you compare to the table again, it's actually taking the form of uh, the right-hand side equation. Of course, with the uh, if you take out the constant value half, it's still, it's still getting the, the same form of uh, delta P divided by rho V squared. So this one, we normally we call this ratio as the pressure coefficient. CP. Uh, another one is the drag coefficient. Drag coefficient is the force divided by half rho v square divided by l square. So if you compare the table above, this side compared to the drag coefficient, actually is also uh, a dimensionless uh, equation. Same with the lift coefficient also. Okay. So you have two. Uh, when you study um, fluid mechanics uh, 3279, um, maybe next semester, we will look a little bit more further into drag coefficient and lift coefficient. Okay. Cavitation number. So this is another new term for uh, fluid mechanics. So cavitation given by this equation, P minus PV divided by dynamic uh, pressure. So PV is the is the pressure that you measure uh, when you conduct the test, right? The pressure when you conduct the test. P is the pressure in the liquid stream. So this one you measure from inside the tube. What is the pressure you have? Then this one, you there's a number for you to uh, make reference. It means you change the temperature in for the liquid. Then you measure the pressure. Uh, cavitation is is important when you focus on pipe flow. Uh, cavitation is the bubble duration that will change the behavior of your flow. Right. So uh, for for today lesson, what is important for this slide is that uh, you heard cavita cavitation number before, and cavitation is you can refer to the table I show you just now on the right hand side. It's just saying that uh, this cavitation number is a uh, dimensionless. Uh, number a uh, dimensionless parameter. Um, another one is the gravitational force. Uh, when you study uh, float uh, float mechanics later on, um, a new term we call it a uh, frog number fr equal to v divided by gr. So if you look at the form of the equation and the table just now on the right hand side. So under gravitational force is GL divided by V square. So if you uh, square both sides of this equation, you'll get the same form of uh, this equation that you see on the screen here. So what does this fraud number uh, important? Fraud number is important when you want to design something floating on the surface. Um, if you're in the shipping company or you're in the ship design, you design for the ship, uh, that generate wave in as 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 you travel, then frog number is a significant number to to look at. For example, Reynolds number. You look at when you have Reynolds number, you know whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. So for the frog number, you can you can estimate the behavior of the wave that you generate from your design. So frog number is about wave. Okay. Uh, what about surface tension example? Surface tension example, uh, something we call it Weber number given by this equation. So if you compare again the side by side to the table, so Weber number 
also fall under surface tension category that is a ratio of dimensionless uh, parameter. Okay. So yeah, Weber number, just a side note, what, what does this Weber number do? Is always applied in a capillary wave of the free surface. So this one, when you study uh, in a very small channel that generate wave, huh? surface wave. Okay. So you'll come into this when you study master level or PhD level. So these numbers will come into place. Huh? Uh, the next one is on the compressibility. Um, the compressibility is a Mach number. So Mach number, you take velocity times the local uh, sound, uh, speed of sound. So um, when your Mach number is, you take the Mach number and you rewrite your number, Mach number. The speed of sound is a square root of pressure divided by rho. This is a density. This is a pressure. Yeah. Then you can rewrite as a EV divided by rho. And again, you compare side by side with the table. It just proves that the Mach number is another example of a dimensionless dimension. Okay. And so on. Um, Okay, so the next one, the next one, the, the few more slides is just to uh, test your concept on the similarity uh, between model and prototype flow. Okay. Similarity and prototype flow. Um, the first condition that you must have is that you must have geometric similarity. So when you, when, uh, okay, these slides, what is important is that, uh, it will answer how you relate the dimensional, uh, the pi that you generate before this, pi one and pi two, why you use pi one and pi two, how you compare it with the uh, model that you, you, you built and the a big prototype, a, a scale one to one, uh, a realistic uh, body, how you relate these two, how you relate the result you get in the experiment using model and the real scenario you have in the real, real life. So the first, first condition that you must have is that um, geometric similarity it means that the shape must be same. The shape must be same. Huh? The shape must be same. The, the, first, the, the first criteria you must meet for similarity, the first is the geometry. The, the shape must be the same. Second one, kinematic must be the same. Kinematic similarity means the velocity that you use in your experiment must be same in the real scenario so that your data can be used directly to estimate the, the, the real life scenario. So the first one, you look at the shape. The second one, you look at the velocity that you generate in your experiment. Velocity. Okay. The third one is dynamic similarity. What does it mean? It means that the force that you simulate in the experiment, the force distribution or the force that you use to, to, to generate the test must be the must be same to the real scenario. Okay. Of course, under a scale factor, huh? Under a scale factor. So just repeat huh? what is same, what must be the same, shape must same, velocity must same, force must be must be same. Okay, then um, another question generated from how we make sure that we have same force in the model and prototype. How we ensure the dynamic similarity uh, between model and prototype. We will use what we learned previously, the pi theorem, to obtain dynamic similarity. Okay. This is an important point. Eh? This is also answering why we need to learn this chapter. We learn pi theorem is because we need to make sure we have a dynamic similarity between our model and prototypes. Okay. So this is the example that we see before this, like the drag force in one of our tutorial question. We have this equation previously, f equal to rho v squared d squared equal to function of mu divided by rho vd. This is one of your tutorial uh, example. 
So if you have a same shape or geometrical similar case, then you will have a dynamic similarity uh, scenario. If you take the row VD divided by mu equal to your row VD divided by mu of your prototypes. The ratio between what you test, us, the ratio number that you test in the model will be the same as what you get in the real life. So you can use this conversion to make comparison or direct converter or conversion into a real life application. Okay. So later I will give you one example how we use uh, uh, these slides, uh, the, the information that you see on these slides. Yeah? Uh, same, uh, if you want to use the left hand side, you can compare force divided by rho v square d square in the model scale equal to what happened in the prototypes. It will be the same. Okay, so if you get a ratio at the model, you can estimate what is happening in the prototypes, providing they are dynamically similar and same shape and same force. Uh, you must meet all these criteria. Then you can use the pi theorem. Okay, let's give you give you a one example. Huh? Okay, so on your screen here, you are seeing a, a sauna transducer. Let's check who is here. Okay, who is still not here? All right. So let's say you are having a, a sauna transducer. Um, that you are seeing a circle over there. So circle here. Uh, having a diameter of 0.3 meter and um, and on the left this uh, left hand side diagram is in um, in the real case so real case you have uh, a shape of a diameter of your prototype dp is a prototype is a real scenario case is 0.3 meter and the velocity in the real case you get on the mode on the prototype itself is 2.6 meter per second the water the, the transducer dip into the water, the water happened at 5 degrees C. However, on the right hand side, you try to model the scenario with a model. So this model, you use a diameter of 0.5, uh, 0.15 meter, means you scale down half the diameter and you are measuring, you are generating the, 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 vo the, the velocity on the model here. And in the experiment, you are using air. You're not using water, but using air. And there's a force uh, measured on the model, which is a three Newton. So we need to require the, the, the test speed in the experiment so that we can mimic the real scenario we have here. Okay. Uh, the condition is that if the drag of the model on this condition is three Newton, estimate the drag on the prototype. So from the calculation, we estimate what is the drag force FP over here. So by relating what you have on the left hand side, relating to the right hand side, then you do the calculation. Okay, you, you clear on the situation we have here, uh, Amir? Yes. Okay, so now we look at how we apply what we learn. Alright. How we do the similarity test. Okay. So one thing we need to uh, inform is that the type of the fluid is different. One is in water, one is in air. Okay. So we will assume that we don't have cavitation effect. We, do, we assume that uh, we don't have a compressibility effect. Okay. So again, uh, since we are finding the drag force, so we already found how, how what is the uh, relation between uh, F divided by rho V square D square equal to uh, function of mu divided by rho V D. This one we done in one of a uh, tutorial question. We continue from the previous uh, tutorial question uh, in this in this scenario. Okay, so if you are not sure, it will be in this one of our tutorial question, um, this one, right? Uh, about drag force. Then at the end, you get the equation of this one, 
f equal to this one right so if you're not sure go back to the previous uh, video or powerpoint slides to for the information okay we're back to our example so we we, we reuse this ratio f equal to rho v squared d squared equal to function of mu divided by rho v d and we should run at the Reynolds number the same because we need to have the, the, the three similarity uh, condition, geometry, um, the shape, the velocity, and the force must be the same. So the first test that we, we use uh, is use Reynolds number model equal to Reynolds number prototypes. Okay, this is to ensure dynamic uh, similarity. So how you calculate Reynolds number? Reynolds number equal to rho VD divided by mu. I just put in the sub M here just to denote as a model dimension. And I use the P sub P to denote as a prototypes. So Reynolds prototype equal to rho VD also divided by mu. Then I compare side by side. Okay, the first, the, the following step is to find the seawater properties and substitute into the prototype here because all these we have information. If you look at the information on the screen here, rho you can find from the table, from the property table, v is given, diameter given, mu you need to find from table. So and then you equal, you, you make the equalization. That uh, means uh, you, you, you solve this simple equation. Reynolds number model equal to Reynolds number prototypes. Uh, same with the Re Reynolds number for the model. Rho, you can find from a table because it's air. Uh, velocity, you need to find. Diameter given. Mu, you can find from the table for air. So you rearrange these two. Right, you, you, you equal these two equations, you rearrange to get Vm. Okay, rearrange to get Vm. The second one is on the force. You can equal the next step. Okay, the first step is you, you analyze based on the Reynolds number. You equal two and then you get Vm. The second step is that you equal the model on the left hand side. You take this equation, you equal model, you take the model on the left, and then you put prototype on the right. Okay, force uh, this one, model on the left equal to prototype on the right. Okay, force model is given, rho you find from the table, velocity is uh, you find previously from Reynolds number equation just now. Diameter given. Force you need to find. Rho prototype you find from a table, water. Velocity is given. Diameter is given. So there's only one unknown inside this uh, equation. You can find what is the force P over here. You understand the principle, uh, Amir? Yes. Okay. okay, right. So basically we just use back we equal the, the the term inside here, model equal to prototypes, we get the unknown. Then you solve for the second set. You take this one, model equal to prototype, you substitute inside all the known parameter, you're able to find the missing parameter inside there. Okay. So you understand huh, this example? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, another one is the, another example. I think this one is the last last uh, last example. Yeah, correct. Last example for today uh, lecture. So let's say you're conducting an experiment. You have a data, and this experiment you are using a wind tunnel data, and you are using a scale model. You know that all the model we use, there is a scale value there. In this case, we use one equal to sixteen. Means one cm or 1 mm on the model equal to 16 times of the real, real, uh, real object. Lah. Okay, yeah, so it just means uh, this one. 
You understand uh, the scale, the, the 1 over 16, this one. What does it mean? Yeah. Okay. Then you have all the data here. Like you have the airspeed, drag force, uh, 18, and so on. You have this set of data. So uh, using the properties of air, calculate and plot the dimensionless aerodynamic drag coefficient versus Reynolds number. So this one, again, is what I showed you just now previously uh, on the drag force uh, example. You can plot graph uh, y versus x. Then, uh, but your Reynolds number is in terms of uh, w. Lah, huh? So find the minimum test speed uh, above the uh, uh, test speed for above. Uh, which CD remains constant. We want to find our uh, drag coefficient to become uh, constant. And then from the CD that we find, we able to estimate the drag force that uh, for our model here. Drag force and power requirement for prototype. So this is the second section of the question. After you find what is the model information, then you apply it into a real scenario, or in this case, we call it prototype. Okay, so prototype given a velocity of uh, 100 km per hour. And again, uh, remember to change all the non unit SI into unit SI. So kilogram per hour, you need to change it into meter per second when you do calculation. Okay, just this is just uh, one of the areas you need to be careful when you um, solve the question. Okay, so we, how we solve? So the first one, you call call out the equation for CD. CD equal to force divided by uh, drag force equal to half rho v squared a. So this one I already show you in the previous table when we talk about the, 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 the table, the five important uh, conversion table just now. So CD equal to force divided by uh, half rho v squared a. So we need to use this one. Then Reynolds number. What is the equation for Reynolds number? Reynolds number equal to rho vd divided by mu. However, in this case, we will focus on our characteristic length. In this case, we use characteristic length of width. We replace the d with the w. Okay. So let's see how we convert the experimental data into a real one. So uh, this slide is uh, how we link this slide to uh, how we apply or what is the useful, useful of this uh, uh, these slides. These slides, the information here will help you when you do your final year projects later on. So if you need to simulate things by model, uh, then this chapter will help you to explain your data. Uh, so normally we come to your, your results, the panel will ask you a question. So make sure you know how, how to relate what you get and then to a, a, a real scenario out there. Okay. How we do? Uh, these are all the things that we need to solve. So what, what, how we do? Okay, so the first thing we need to find is the, is the length or the width that for our model. What is the, what is the shape? All right, we, we, we go for the shape first, means the, the diameter of our model and our prototypes. So we know that from the scale one to 16, so we know that, um, one C, uh, one, uh, the model will equal to 1 over 16 of our uh, prototype there. So this is the first ratio equation that we use to combine uh, to, to analyze what is happening to our prototype later on. Okay, Our W model equal to 1 over 16 uh, W prototypes. You, you, you understand, right? That how we make the, how we use the 1, one double dot 16 scale, 1 to 16 scale in the mathematics uh, uh, equation. Okay, good. Eh? So uh, if you if you substitute the value to find the width of a model, so you take 2.4 meter because our prototype is 2.4 meter. How we can see 2.4 from the statement just now, uh, this one from the statement, the width at the frontal area of prototype is 2.4. Area is 7.8 meter square. So 2.4 is your prototype. We need to get our model dimension. So the model dimension, you divide by 16, you get 0.15. So this is the width of the model. Why we need to find the W? Because we need to equal our Reynolds number together. 
Uh, we need to put side by side what is your Reynolds number on model, what is your Reynolds number on prototypes. Then from there, you find a missing parameter. Area also same. Uh, area need to be careful. Uh, although uh, area is, uh, you need to square it. Uh, you need to square it uh, to get the ratio between these two. Uh, because area is the length times length. Okay, uh, area you take length times length. So it's a square uh, scale. So this also one of the mistake done by student when they answer. So be careful when you convert model area into prototypes area. So model area equal to one over 16 square. So remember, uh, area is a L times L, is a double uh, scale. Huh? It's, it will double up the scale when you do the uh, convert, conversion. So your area of your model will be one over 16 square times 7.8 7 meters square equal to 0 0.03. Let me calculate now. I'm not sure whether this one is correct. 1 over 16 square times 7. Yeah, correct. 0 0.03 meter square. Okay. Okay, then after that, we, com we, we combine all the information we have. So to get the track coefficient, CD, we substitute the answer, meaning we have all the row. We have the area for our experiment because experiment we have uh, we are using air, so you know your row for air, uh, row for area. So your CD equation can be simplified into uh, five three point three force divided by v squared. So your Reynolds number, again, you can find. Your Reynolds number, velocity, you, you need to find. So you have your row, you know your width, you know your mu for air. So your Reynolds number is in term of V. So your Reynolds number equal to 0 0.04, uh, 1.04 times power 4 V. So you have a CD and a V here. Then you can plot already. The first instruction is to ask you to plot your CD versus Reynolds number in terms of V. So I just show you the example. So uh, CD is on the left. And this one is on the model. Yeah, this one is on the model because this is the one that you can uh, plot. You understand how you get uh, the first first point here, uh, Amir? How you get uh, first point? This point is kind of blue. Yeah. yeah, how you get your V? You understand? Yes. So from the table, from the experiment data, this table. Yeah. Yeah, so if you substitute 53.3, FD is this one. You substitute the first point, 3.10 here. V square means 18 square. You get the number, you will get this point you'll get a cd value around here then reynolds number also you substitute the air speed that you measure for the first point you substitute 18 here then you get the the x y coordinate for your plot understand oh, okay yeah you, you get the idea the, you make sense right yeah yeah at least you you you, you understand then you're able to do it already so we have the first point plot, second point plot. So that's why you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you have nine data here. So you have nine point here by using the uh, the equation that you developed just now. Clear? Yeah. Okay. All right. So after you get this uh, graph. Um, from the graph itself, where do you think you get a constant value? How do you, how you know that you already get a, a, a constant uh, value? So it will be around here, la, around here. So if you look at the graph, it will be around four, la, you can say it's around four. And the value will be around 
0.46 uh, about there. Okay, if you plot your, your graph, you will get your CD uh, minimum, uh, not minimum, CD for the model that are already constant, which is around here. You get a straight line, means it already get constant value. So we have these two number. Um, okay, so from this graph itself, we can uh, we can uh, we can mention or we can claim that we our CD uh, leap coefficient value reach constant at a at a value of zero point four six. Understand, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Then from here we can use this zero point four six to calculate for our prototype. Meaning that because we, 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 we equal our Reynolds number uh, from model to scale, then from there we can use the same uh, uh, same our same CD value to calculate uh, for our vehicle for our prototypes. Okay, so just from there you you use the value for calculation. So CD equal to force divided by half rho v square a. So you just rewrite the equation. You want to find the force. So force equal to half rho, uh, half rho v square c d a. Uh, just remember to change the speed into meter per second. You'll get the force is around 1.71 kilonewton. Okay. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Right. Then after that. Um, the it asks you to calculate power. In the question, it asks you to calculate power. Let me check that the question again. Yeah, it asks you the power requirement for the prototypes to travel at this one. So there's an equation. Uh, so the equation is also quite direct. So what is power? Power is force times velocity. Power equal to power equal to force times velocity or power times speed. So you, you have the FT just now, 1.71. Velocity of the prototype, you have 100 kilometer per second, uh, 100, 100 kilometer per hour, you convert into meter per second. You take FD times the speed. So the value will be 74, uh, 47.5 kilowatt. So this is how you, how okay the 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 pressure, uh the 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 not pressure power you require on the on the car to overcome the drag is forty seven point five kilowatt. It means that your engine should produce at least seventy four uh, forty seven point five kilowatt to overcome the drag. So if your engine is less than this this uh this power, the car cannot move. The car cannot move through the, the, the air. Okay, so this is how we apply the, the numbers. Huh? So any question for today's so lecture? So far, okay, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, let me end the recording.